So I'll tell you, as a young boy, I loved my father's library. Because I'd lay in there for hours, and that sun would shine in. And I'd be getting inspired by the greatest works of science fiction ever written. And it might have been 1988, but in my mind, it was 2388. And I was the hero of these stories. And together with my trusty AI sidekick and my crazy cool spaceship, I was out spreading the greatness of humanity throughout the entire universe. And little did I know that within a few short decades, this ridiculous vision for myself would actually begin coming true. And that started on a particular Sunday in 2013 when I was packing for a trip to Iowa. See, my phone buzzed, and on there, it was the weather for where I was going to be the next day. But I didn't tell it I was going there. It knew all by itself. <laughs> it was thinking for me and anticipating my every need. I was clearly becoming the exact kind of AI-driven superhuman the stories of my childhood were all about. And so were you. That was five years ago. So what do we have to show for ourselves now that the internet thinks on our behalf? Fake news. <laughs> Cyberbullying. There are epic levels of hate and rage that spill over from social media and into the streets and into the schools of the real world. These are the hallmarks of today's digital human race. Something has gone so horribly wrong in the unification of humans with technology that we are not becoming better people. We're becoming better assholes. <laughs> so as a 20-year veteran of designing software that drives human behavior, I'm here to help us wake up and take control of the technology that shapes us before we lose the opportunity to define what we become. This is an enormous opportunity. So we need to understand that despite all this crazy news, we know there's something wrong, but there's a specific issue core to all of it. And if we don't understand that, we're not going to be able to fix it. So we're going to cut to the chase and discuss that right now. Here's the fundamental issue. The artificial intelligence that filters the internet for each of us overwhelms us into rejecting our own humanity. And the humanity we reject is empathy, compassion, open-mindedness, and curiosity. And we reject it because AI has the power to make the world seem to agree with us even when it doesn't. AI systems like Google and Facebook and Alexa have this effect because they're predicting how we might think and then driving information to you filtered to fit the prediction. And it's so much easier to consume information that's driven to you than to search by your free will alone that you're very likely to accept whatever they send you verbatim. And everything from the internet's affected, from what friend to connect with, a piece of news, a social media post, a product to buy, it's all filtered by AI. So if you are digitally connected, AI is actively manipulating the majority of information that you see and heavily influencing the majority of people that you know. And that's only getting more true with each advance in consumer technology. Because initially, all we had were those phones to look at. And our watches begin vibrating, give us a short headline. And now speakers are waiting for us to ask questions so they can bark out convenient answers. Soon, your contact lenses are going to display AI-driven stuff right on top of the people in front of you. What are you going to say to those people? What AI tells you to? Or are you going to muster your humanity and ask an open-ended question instead? This represents unprecedented power to drive human behavior at scale. But the titans of the internet did not intend for this power to narrow our minds and promote superficiality. It just does. It's actually an unintended long-term side effect of the primary type of AI used in these systems called machine learning. 
You see, machine learning slots you into a pattern of predictability based upon the regressive analysis of data that surrounds you, the footprints you've left on the internet, and those of people that it thinks are like you. Now, this isn't new. Credit scores have used the same technique for decades to predict your behavior. What is new is that this technology gets to choose what information ends up dominating your daily perception of the world. It doesn't just predict who you are anymore. It actually drives you to become that by pushing you information day in and day out, over and over, reinforcing your patterns until what you only sort of sometimes were becomes dominant. And the rubber meets the road when you meet someone from a different pattern, but it seems like they're from a different planet because they basically are. Their AI isn't serving them anything close to what you relate to, so there's no common ground for empathy. And then open-mindedness is off the table because the entire world seems to agree with each of their points of view. And then when the argument ensues, compassion, curiosity, nowhere to be found. This is actually how really good people easily end up rejecting their own humanity, including you. And this dynamic is only getting worse, so the design has to change. AI must be made to ensure that the human is in control at all times. And what might that look like? Well, for starters, AI would make itself visible to me by putting a little clickable tag on any information it manipulates. That way I can see it happened. And it would notice when my footsteps have regressed a bit too much to the mean and pepper in some off-pattern information to help me prompt my humanity. And it occasionally it'd have a little conversation with me to verify it still knows who I am, which would probably look a little something like this. Hey, Tyson AI here. Just checking in to make sure we're still friends. Ah. I think you're like Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin. What do you think? <laughs> I think that's wrong. Oh, sorry. Uh, who are you again? Uh, well, clearly I'm far more like Stephen Hawking and Neil Armstrong. Oh, impressive. Yeah. Well, forget everything I've sent you, and here's what good old Stephen Neil would like instead. Ah, cool. Thanks, AI. You're the best. No problem. I'm there for you, baby. <laughs> it kind of feels like that. You know, this moment of mindfulness would pay far-reaching dividends. My footprints would no longer regress to the mean. AI would have awareness of my, of my ambitions and help me towards that. I would be way more into the information that AI was, and advertisements, that AI was sending my more hawking-like armstrong -y self because I had a hand in defining that. And advertisers would make way more money in the process, which is exactly why I believe that Google and Facebook and anyone else that sells ad space online should test humanized AI designs, because I'm sure they will find a path to greater profitability while amplifying humanity at the same time. And once that happens, everything's going to get so much better, because there's no reason not to, and there's nothing like profit to drive a transformation. But let's not stop there. If AI can drive me to be anything it wants me to be, then give me the keys to define that. I should be able to go to it and say, please, please, great AI, manipulate me into being a better husband or teacher or leader. Make it just as easy for me to become a better person as it is to become a better asshole. And good news, everyone, we don't have to wait for all these changes to bring humanity back. There's something you can do right now. You can actually train today's AI to realize you're already a better person. All you have to do is be less superficial online and be more authentic. Just apply your humanity. Have empathy by being vulnerable online and only sharing genuine truths. And have compassion by being positive towards others in comments and posts. And never again click a like button superficially. And have open-mindedness by not unfriending people for their differing opinions alone. And actually value seeing their points of view on your wall. 
And most importantly, most importantly, have curiosity. Search for alternative information by your free will alone, as this will automatically adjust the force-fed headlines that AI is so good at driving to you. Now, always remember, AI can see everything, even though you can't see it. And it is amplifying your patterns of behavior. So you want to make damn sure that all it gets to see is the very best version of you. Now, we've all seen how horrible the world can be when AI ends up overwhelming our humanity. So I look forward to the day when technology companies finally give you the transparency into and ultimate control over anything and everything that manipulates you. But meantime, I'm hopeful that every one of you becomes relentless at being your best self online. And I need you with me on this. Because, folks, I'm about to become a dad. <laughs> and I am terrified. <laughs> I'm terrified that our negative patterns are going to be force-fed into my daughter's mind by tomorrow's vastly more powerful AI. And I really want there to be a day where my daughter's in my library, and that sun's shining in, and she's inspired by the history that we have laid down for all of our children. And her mother and I can rest easy and be excited knowing that our daughter, together with her trusty AI sidekick, get to live in an extremely rapidly evolving digital human world that is and will always be a vastly more beautiful place. Thank you. <laughs>